Everybody and welcome to the Team Venom Comic Show. I'm your host, Gunnar Franks, joined by three incredibly talented individuals who have a lot to say and uh, to, a lot to shill to the fabulous audience that we get today. Uh, I'm joined by the career of... Don't give me that look, Rory. You know it's true. You shill you, everything. I thought you were about to introduce yourself then. <laughs> no, my, my shilling comes later. Um, I'm joined by the career of the suit, Rory Bailey. Hello. How are you? I am wonderful, thank you. How are you? I'm great. We've also joined by Mike Jimmy De Bruin. I believe How are you doing? Him. How's it going, lovelies? <laughs> it, it's great. I've been pulled in last minute, so tell me what you do. <laughs> uh, I'm the creator for Love and Cora. Um, I have my own publishing company, Fairies and Ants. And together with my team, we make several series. We organize anthologies, uh, publish uh, normal books, and do all kinds of stuff. Wonderful. And I'm joined by Nina Dizzy. Abilene? Did I murder her? Line? So Abilene. So Abilene. Okay. Close, close <laughs> enough. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm an ignorant foreigner. It's fine. You're used to it. Nina, it's fine. No, it's not a real name. It's a pseudonym. <laughs> Oh, I mean, yeah, but I don't, I don't want to call you out and be like, here's Nina Smith. It just, you know, we'll go with what's, what's on my screen. <laughs> Nina, tell us about what you do. I'm an Italian-Canadian comic artist living in Italy. I have been creating comics for over five years, and I am currently crowdfunding my biggest project yet, Sunrise Blossom. Wonderful. All right, so what we'll do is uh, we'll take it in turns. Uh, we'll start with Rory. Because okay. we'll get you over, we'll we'll get you over with. I've heard about your thing so many times. I'm involved in your thing. I don't care about your thing. Tell people you, about your thing. Your face is like on the cover of my thing. <laughs> I know it is. Ooh. It's, it's, it's why it gets me. And I'll also talk about your thing. <laughs> well, it's, you won't be the only one. Carry on. So my uh, my series is now completely in print. All four issues of um, the suit, which say it's all completely in print, in print only issue four is available because the other three have all sold out which is great um i've got a collected edition that's due with me in the next couple of weeks which is this nice beauty um i've had the proof copies for all of them but uh, the latest thing that we've done for the team venom comics thing is mr host connor's own series which is sins of limbo which i've got the issue one proof here of as well so uh, well done to you connor so thank you i made it out of spite because i failed to believe that you could do it and i couldn't um <laughs> uh, mike let's talk about your project and um i'll ask you a different question because i know Rory uh, didn't uh do a kickstarter or anything like that what's tell, describe to us your um, um project and also the kickstarter Cora, um well it's going to be on indiegogo uh, Life and Cora oh. is a series of short stories um, around a set of creatures that live in a very improbable world where um, every single issue we follow a new kind of creature in a uh, different setting and, and a different part of the, that world. And we try to make it as approachable for all ages as possible. So even if there's a lot of world building going on, um, you can read it as a small kid and have a wonderful time, but you know you can read it as a grown up and and still have um, a very interesting and, and and wonderful experience with it. Wonderful, uh, Nina. Tell us about Sunrise Blossom. All right. So dramatic effect. Oh. Okay. Harpies, girls kissing. Falcons and drama. So There's my sunrise history on show. <laughs> <laughs> so Sunrise Blossom is a coming of age story that focuses on Ivy, a young falcon abandoned by her birth mother and raised by a family of owls. While traveling with her sister to learn about human culture, they have an argument and Ivy is separated from her, only to be picked up by a human woman, Violet who helps her discover herself and bloom into womanhood. But it is only after a dramatic turn of events that Ivy discovers her feelings for her human companion. That's the base synopsis uh, of the comic. It is a girl's love romance comic in an urban fantasy setting. 
It has over 220 plus pages. So if you like Monster Girls, if you like furries, then you'll definitely like this series. First of all, props on the very dramatic description. I liked it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that sounds great. We'll, we'll keep it going, get a few questions in for everybody. Rory, I'm not going to ask you about my product because I know it's amazing. But just <laughs> tell us about more about this. Is there, is there any more of your stuff to come? Yeah, um, I've currently got yeah. issue five on the way. Um, issue six is halfway finished as of this morning. And um, I've also been working on a one shot, which will be um, to flesh out a, a crossover that I'm planning with the writer of the new comic book series, Sins of Limbo, where the pair of us are going to be working on a, uh, <laughs> on a crossover in the future. And that's pretty much all I, all I can say about that for the time being. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mike, when it comes to your origin stories and your very cool sounding monster world, what was the inspiration of to create that? Um, stuff like Star Trek, um, the Ball of Heaven uh, series, um, a lot of uh, speculative biology series, and honestly, a love for classic European comics, which my comic style and art style is very much reminiscent of. And to uh, be able to make bite-sized stories that, you know, give an adventure and you can put it down again and you just had a good time. And that's always been the kind of story that I grew up with and the kind of story that I've always wanted to create. Very good. Nina, your inspiration for a 220-page incredibly dramatic love story. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely, um, there is definitely some japan influence um with series like daily life with monster girls monster girl encyclopedia uh and things like that but also when it comes to um modern urban fantasy uh settings which are not as explored as they should be uh in modern western media and so it has to be a mix of love for um birds and animals in general, uh, and urban fantasy um, that gave me the idea to push forward this close to real life, but not real life enough to be considered real life and to be considered fantasy. Uh, yeah, there we go. Very good. Found a happy medium between the two. Yeah. Rory, <clears throat> I, know, I, I know everything about your comic. We've done multiple things. Just tell me how great mine is. Okay, fair. It, it's very great, and uh, to be fair, yours is. Thank and, you, <laughs> but yeah, just for the benefit of Mike and Nina, because me and Connor have, have done a few videos chatting about mine, I'm, I'm trying to not talk about mine that much, just be, to allow you both to to, to go for your product, products more. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll briefly mention again Sins of Limbo by Connor Franks, which uh, nice, lovely little cover, some great artwork in there, some nice twists and turns set in um, the Valley of Limbo. Oh, and it's yeah, it's great. It's a really nice little uh, subject. And Connor, what were your inf influences on this story? And you've just asked everyone Influence else theirs. Yeah, I mean, my influences, yeah, was just <laughs> something happens to my character and yours. So I decided to make that a good thing since you wanted to be mean. And that's, <laughs> that's as polite as I can say without being given spoilers. Um, yeah, it's, it's Sins of Limbo. Limbo is a city set around hell in which it's the devil's playground. He'll, he puts incredibly evil dead people in there to live again, but live in a world where everything is evil. So they can just be the evil selves they are. And then there's an element of there's innocent people who go there who are rejected by God for the very cliche thing of, you know, you don't believe me, get out. Very cliche way to look at it, but it was the only way I could really fit it. <laughs> so it was the only way I could get innocent souls to be in that kind of place. It's a case of innocent souls either become evil or become the prey. There's multiple factions of different levels of evil kind. Some human, some humanoid. And then my character who's stuck down there. 
because of multiple tries to kill Rory. <laughs> um, I've lost my train of thought because I wasn't going to talk. <laughs> I'm professional. Future stuff you were asking me about, and then I derailed you. Yes, you did. Yeah. So you've got your issue five coming, and your graphic novel. You've got your proof copy. Sweet. It's hard to ask Rory questions because he. he I talked to him a million times a day about his comic book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've proofread every page before the comic's even a full thing. Um, we'll go to Mike. Your love for sci-fi-esque worlds is yes. obviously a huge influence on you and your creation. How many... Here's the world. Oh, that's cool. So you got a core that gives off uh, blue light mm. and then there's um, continents orbiting it and there's a single cloud that gives water to all of the, the continents and for some reason life actually thrives on it. And so we first follow... Um, the more simple creatures that can fly and, and, and live on the ground. Then the second issue, we follow um, the ground creatures from issue one, where one really wants to learn how to fly and eventually finds a flying machine. And that goes horribly wrong. And they're and the cutest stories ever. <laughs> Nina has them. It's... Um, and then in issue three, we follow the rock people called the Rockhola. And you can really see the art go on a new level. Oh, nice. And in issue four, which is coming on June 11th, uh, to Indiegogo, we're going to go into the Mysias who live deep underwater on the same continent. And they um, have a very strict society where your inner talent defines who you are for the rest of your life. And it's okay. about the individual not agreeing or not wanting to be that one thing. Very good. That sounds very good. And I've done one of the variant covers for yes, she did. Issue 4. Oh, very nice. A little crossover. Nina, your, your comic and the storyline in the dramatic uh, where you told us all, <laughs> it sounds... It, to my knowledge of that kind of comic, it's very little. I'm not going to pretend it's not. But it sounds like a very niche oh, <laughs> idea. I'm not judging. It's fine. It is. I wish someone had told me before I started. Well, yes and no, because, you know, I um, I have read a bit into it personally. And, 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 you know, I've read it on Webtoon because it's free to read there. Do check it out in Indiegogo if you want the actual mm -hmm. book. Um, but, um, it's very much like, it feels niche when you first start reading it, but she tells it in a really approachable and, and easy to, to understand way. And you really get sucked into the setting a lot easier than you might expect from a description like she would be giving in the same way that, you know, Life and Cora is a lot easier to get into than you might expect. Oh, thank you. Very good. Um, yeah, but I think Mike just answered your question very well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it, yeah is, no. it is niche. Um, and for also that same reason, it is hard to sometimes find an audience to get roped into it. Um, but on Webtoons, it's been going really well. Uh, in almost three years that I've been working on it, so roughly two and a half, 2.7 years, let's say, um, that I've been working on it, it's got over uh, 1,200 subscribers and over 100,000 page views on Webtoons. So those are pretty good numbers. Hey, good numbers, yeah. Which frustratingly kind of um, didn't translate at all in the Indiegogo. You, did, so you needed to promote it more f f beforehand, but that's okay. Well, I did it. I did, uh, no, I did it enough. It is my, my very first campaign. But like I did um, create several episodes on the Webtoon page saying that it was going live. And like as soon as the pre-launch page was available, uh, I shared a link at the bottom 
uh, one of the episodes. And then I also created uh, an episode to advertise the Draw This In Your Style contest that I have going on at the moment, which, by the way, um, if you check out hashtag Sunrise Blossom uh, on various social media, you will be able to find the contest in which if you redraw the cover in your own style, you have a chance to win a free copy of the comic. Uh, so completely free copy, free shipping, free everything. So mm -hmm. I've made, so I was saying I've made several episodes in which I was pushing the fact that I have the Indiegogo campaign. And you would expect that at least maybe <laughs> one or two people among those 1,200 people who subscribe to my comic would be willing to pass over a few bucks to support the campaign. But sadly, that hasn't been the case. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that it was something that was rather surprising. I'm glad I didn't put the, 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 the funding goal higher than I did. Yeah, it, it, it's quite a common thing where you can have a decent following towards uh, something that is free, but then as soon as it comes to the same thing, uh, although it's a physical copy and obviously with Indiegogo and Kickstarter, you can add certain perks to however much one, people want to throw. There's still there's still people have that, that gap of, I'm seeing it here free and then I pay to see it. And it's, it's a very good, it happens in video games all the time. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Well, it happened to well, our, our first venture, which was we we attempted to do a digital magazine about seven or eight years ago, and we did the first issue free, and it had twenty thousand downloads, which is a number that I've just clung to for for, for those seven years of twenty thousand downloads. First issue that we paid was weren't paid for. I didn't do it for much either. I think we did it for something like one pound fifty. Um. And it was twice the size of the previous one, and it was promoted because it was it was mainly a wrestling magazine, and it was promoted by Impact Wrestling, who were quite big at the time, and um, that had four downloads. <laughs> so, Oof. So it's just Oof. Like, really deflating when that happens. So it was big mood. Pain, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Rory. Let's talk about your inspiration for the soup. Don't um, say yourself. Do you know what, what I didn't realise until today? <laughs> was Because well, I've, I've said to you before, I've had this idea in my head since um, since I was about 18 or 19, something like that. And now in my mid-30s, only just got around to actually doing it. And a few bits and pieces were taken from things that I'd read, things that I'd, I'd seen over the years. And I'd only recently forced myself to do it. And... I <laughs> was hilarious watching, hilariously watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer today for the first time in about ten years, and was like, "I've accidentally wrote some of this." I don't remember seeing this since I was, since I was young. But whoops! <laughs> I mean, even if, I think even if you directly stole from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, we're at a level. I have directly stole. <laughs> I, I, even if you did. We're at a level now where Josh Whedon could sue you for you literally stealing his stuff and you'd still come off the good guy. That's yeah, true. <laughs> Sorry for my little really snort good. there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all good, Peppa Pig. It's fine. Um, yeah. No. Nah, yeah, the the pay-to-win thing is is in everything that is creative now. And it's it's painful yeah. for the for the little guys in each industry well that, that's that's something that i'm happy like I, I i started with my comics being paid in the first place and so mm -hmm. you know i had a very small but but you know nice audience uh that only grew the more issues came out you know i'm on issue three now we have 10 things published already so being able to just expand on those people because if they paid you once and they liked what they uh, what they saw they're going to come back yeah so it's, it's getting that first little tiny audience that's going to root for you. And then afterwards, it's it's going to be a lot easier. Ramen. Uh, yeah. Um, Mike, you've got, you say you've got issue four coming out soon. Yes. How many issues are you planning for your, for your series? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, I'm just going to keep going. And if my writers give up at some point, then I'm going to find new ones. And I'm just going to keep this, uh, this series going because I love what I'm doing with it. Nice. Nina, obviously, yours is something you've tur you're turning into a, a novel slash, you know, a visual comic. Are, are you 
going to plan to do a sequel to Sunrise Blossom, or have you got? Another oh yeah, absolutely, project? absolutely. The protagonist hasn't had her happily ever after just yet. Um, I've just broken her ever? heart. I've just broken her heart far too many times in the first um, issue, and I'm looking forward to breaking it some more in the next one. <laughs> Felt like I was in my teenage years again, listening to myself. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rory, you've got a few coming out. If you give us the timeline, roughly, I'll pretend I don't know. You can. <laughs> you know exactly what the plan is. With I do. Um, yeah, my issue five is going to be with me in the next week or two, and the collection. The collection's been more awkward than ever because i tried to place an order for the the collected edition about two weeks ago and i'm still trying to get that order placed which is uh, very unfortunate but uh, you know it's just one of those things so i've not had confirmation yet on that but it should in theory only have a 10 day turnaround once they actually go yes we will place it we will do this so uh so yeah issue five mid-june at the latest um the collection imminent sort of thing Nice. All right, we'll wrap up this up. And what better way to wrap things up than to give everybody the, the spotlight to shill your stuff, Rory? Shill whatever you need to shill. I mean, I'll be shilling the the channel that we're doing this video on, so I'm good. I I can happily just move on. So, Mike, if you want to shill yours next, that's fine. Yeah, Mike, you sure, can I can I share my screen so yeah, people can see the pre-launch page for Indiegogo? Uh, uh, I believe so. Yeah, it should work. Um. Ariel uh, host change. disabled participant screen sharing. Okay. There we go. Done. I've changed. <laughs> That's fine. It's oh, <laughs> all right. Should be able to do it now. <laughs> there we go. And that one. So, Love and Cora Four is gonna take you to the deep, um, and we're gonna go way underwater with even better visuals and more ori original art than the previous issue. And if you sign up to this issue, then you can get 30% off of any physical order. Not only that, but we managed to get the uh, shipping down to the U European Union, the UK, and the US to only eight euros. So that's roughly $10. $10. And with the 30% off for the physical copy, you can get the entire series for less than 40 dollars uh, $40. so nice. i'm really looking forward to getting this into everyone's hands um it's drawn and illustrated by myself so i know it's good and i don't don't go for any less nina can nina can attest to that <laughs> and it's gonna be a wonderfully uh child-friendly story that you could happily read with your children off by yourself and just have a wonderful bedtime story. Very nice. We'll also, when it comes to the video in the description of this video on YouTube, there'll also be a link to both of your guys' campaigns. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Nina, it's so your turn to shill your soul. Awesome. Do you mind if I also share real quick? Yeah, that's fine. Not at all. Go for it. All right. So um, I'd love to start by uh, first just showing the variant comment, variant cover that I did for Lorsha's, um, so sorry, for Mike's uh, volume four. So this will be one of the variant covers that you'll be able to get. But going back to myself, Sunrise Blossom, volume one, we're already back to 101%. So... Um, it's going great. Everything's going good. Five euros for a digital PDF copy, 25 euros for a copy of volume one, and 30 for a signed copy with a signed print. So if you like um, pretty redhead girls, if you like birds, if you like girls kissing, uh, if you like furries, then you will definitely like this series. I know, like we said earlier, it sounds niche, but I'm fairly sure that you'll get dragged into it and you won't be able to put it down it, it sounds niche but every every category in anything has was niche at one point so all you, need is, that. Yeah, all you need is the right audience and then the growth will happen um yeah summer has blossomed looks great 
as does everything else, and so do I. I'm beautiful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been a pleasure to host this. I'm your host, Connor Franks. You can find me on Twitter at Con the Heel. Rory you can find him at King underscore roster. Also, go check out Team Venom Media. Who cares? Since that's what he wants to shill. Uh, the links to <laughs> Mike you. and Nina's Kickstarters, Indiegogos, everything like that will be in the description of this video. Do you guys want to promote your Twitter or anything you want people to follow you for updates on? You can find me um, on Twitter on at and underscore ends, and on Facebook as my Jimmy Lorcia de Bren. And you can look on Facebook for Fairies and Ants as well, where you will get updates on everything we do as a publisher. Oh, Nina? Uh, so, well, for me, you can find me on Twitter at, at Nina's Blue Tie. So, all one breath, Nina's Blue Tie. You can find me on Instagram at nina.queen.b. Uh, on Facebook, I've got my comic art page, which, at, which is Nina D. Aberline Comics. Or uh, I also share everything on my normal profile if you'd like to, to watch, um, to see shit posts and memes and things like that. Uh, <laughs> Nina Daisy Aberline. Wonderful. Well, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, go check out these guys' products and make sure you back them. Been a pleasure talking to you guys, and we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Take it easy, bye bye. please.